point of, um, of working with Mexico and Central America to try to address this issue. There's a lot of problems, obviously, in Central America that people are fleeing. I do want to express my appreciation to Secretary Nielsen, Secretary Pompeo, and the Trump administration for negotiating toward a arrangement whereby people who seek asylum in the United States can wait while their claim is being adjudicated in Mexico. That represents a sea change in our relationship with Mexico and a recognition that this is a problem we need to solve together. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good news. Of course, the, the best solution would be a bipartisan fix of what's broken in our immigration system. That's been rejected out of hand by our Democratic colleagues, and uh, that's regrettable. But in the meantime, I'm glad that the administration is working to try to address this humanitarian crisis. That's what Barack Obama called it a couple of years ago, and that's what the mayor of Tijuana calls it today, uh, to try to address this uh, situation. At the start of the 115th Congress, uh, Republicans in the Senate had one goal in mind, and that was to make life better for the American people. And so we set about uh, putting major policy initiatives uh, on the Senate floor, getting them enacted, signed into law, historic tax reform, lifting regulatory burdens, uh, preparing uh, our young people for the workforce, uh, strengthening our national security, historic uh, VA reforms, all things that we believe uh, led to a record of legislative accomplishment in the last couple of years that, uh, that we haven't seen around here in a really long time. And I think a lot of people believe now, I mean, I hear it articulated all the time that now that we're in a time of divided government, that somehow that's going to spell the end of legislative accomplishment. And uh, I'm just here to say it doesn't have to be that way. Um, if you look at throughout our history and times of divided government, have been some of the most consequential legislative accomplishments that we've seen from Social Security reform in 1983 uh, under President Reagan, uh, historic tax reforms in 1986, again under President Reagan with the Democrat House, uh, 1996 welfare reform, Democrat President, Republican Congress, 1997 balanced budget agreement, 2012 uh, making the tax cuts permanent, the Bush tax cuts permanent. And uh, of course, in 2014, historic uh, VA reforms all happened at a time uh, of divided government. And we have demonstrated in the past, and Republicans here in the Senate in the last couple of years have demonstrated, as we have passed major legislation with big bipartisan margins, that we can get things done with divided government. The question is uh, whether the Democrats are going to be willing to join us or whether they're going to be uh, more interested in relitigating the 2016 presidential election. And I hope it is the former, that they will uh, look for ways to work with us in a constructive way to make the lives of working families in this country better. That is what uh, is going to continue to be the focus of Republicans here in the United States Senate. I spent Thanksgiving, as I do every year, visiting the troops overseas and thanking them for what they do to keep us safe and keep us free, uh, visiting with Wyoming soldiers. And this year I went to northern Poland near the Poland-Russia border near Kaliningrad, where Vladimir Putin is increasing his uh, nuclear weapon force. The, uh, this group, and it's a NATO group, Americans, along with British, uh, Poles, uh, there are a number of countries there all as a deterrence to what Russia is doing. And you see the importance of a deterrence, when you take a look at the last 48 hours and the importance of a deterrence when you see what Russia has done with regard to Ukraine and blocking and firing on ships, just moving product from one port in Ukraine to another. This is the sole responsibility of Vladimir Putin. I believe the U.S. response so far has been inadequate, that direct threats require decisive action. President Trump will be at the uh, G20 in Buenos Aires. Uh, apparently, Vladimir Putin is going to be there as well. I think it's important for President Trump to tell Vladimir Putin that this behavior uh, is absolutely outlandish, but Putin respects action, not words. So I think we need to do more. I think we need to move ships into the Black Sea and do it quickly. And by doing it quickly, that sends the message to our allies in Ukraine that we are with them and to Russia as well, that international law must be followed. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks. Um, a few weeks ago, you blocked.
Senator Flake from trying to call up the bill to protect special counsel Robert Mueller. We've heard that your, your, your whip say that you might be interested in it. We were working on that. Would you block them again? Because they've talked about going to the floor and trying to call that bill up again tomorrow. Well, I think you know my view. This is a uh, solution in search of a problem. Um, the president's not going to uh, fire Robert Mueller, nor do I think he should, nor do I think he should not be allowed to finish. We have a lot of things to do uh, to try to finish up this year without taking votes on things that are completely irrelevant to uh, outcomes. But would you repeat what you did and object as they ask unanimous consent to bring that bill to the floor tomorrow like they did? I the probably floor? would, yeah. Mm -hmm. Senator McConnell. Yeah. Uh, do you believe that Saudi Arabia should be punished in any way for its role in the killing of Jamal Khashoggi in the South, particularly the conference? Yeah, I mean, uh, what obviously happened, as um, basically certified by the CIA, is completely abhorrent to everything the United States holds dear and stands for in the world. So some kind of response to that uh, certainly would be in order. And we're discussing what the appropriate response should be. Um, it's always been a, a kind of a pragmatic relationship, regardless of who's been in the White House. Um, we value their opposition to the Iranians. And um, I think almost no one believes we should completely and totally fracture our relationship with the Saudis. But yes, some kind of response is going to be appropriate, and we're going to be con we're going to continue to, to talk about that. Should Haspel boot you guys tomorrow? Thank you, Mr. Leader. Uh, the president seems determined to get five billion dollars for the border wall in the year end spending bill. What can you offer Democrats to get them to agree to that figure? Well, we're we're talking about it. Uh, we're trying to get the president uh, the money he would like for the wall. That's part of the year end funding discussion, uh, which is ongoing, uh, not only among the appropriators, but with the administration as well. And we're hoping. That's one of the many things we've got to wrap up here at the end of the year. Um, there are reports that you instructed uh, Major League Baseball's fundraising arm to donate to uh, Senator uh, Cindy Hyde-Smith. Is this true, and does she deserve to retain um, her, her Senate seat, uh, given her comments around yeah, lynching? I've had no discussions about donors to that campaign with anyone. It's certainly my hope that Senator Hyde Smith will be elected today in Mississippi. Well, what about the comments about lynching? I've had no discussions about any of the donations to the campaign. So you're not do you decline to comment about Cindy Hyde Smith's comments about public hanging. Do you think she should have apologized in a more fulsome way? You know, I don't have any observations to make about that. The people of Mississippi are making a judgment today about who they would like to represent them in the Senate. That's the way it works in this country. Senators are from particular states. And all of these issues have been fully discussed uh, all over the state of Mississippi, and we'll have a verdict, uh, an outcome tonight. Thanks a lot.